Hayden Elton High School, this is Mr. Aiden, and it's, this is Kinetics, Part 1, Chemical Kinetics, and I feel the need, the need for speed. Well, the factors that affect the rate of reaction, or the speed of the reaction, there's four different factors, and, and the first one that increases the rate of the reaction is an increase in temperature. And of course, an increase in temperature, what does that do? Well, that increases what we call the rate constant. You don't know about the rate constant yet, but you'll learn in a few minutes that the rate constant is K. And when we increase the temperature, of course, that increases the kinetic energy of the particles, and therefore, it increases the rate of the reaction. We could also say the orientation, how the, the molecules collide and break bonds, because of course, we need break to break bonds in order to have a chemical reaction. The orientation matters. So when you crush something up, the more number of surface areas, the better or the more orientations, the more collisions you will actually have. The other thing that actually ha happens is a catalyst. A catalyst. Now what happens when we add a catalyst? Well, one of two things happens. Either it lowers the activation energy, which means it basically stabilizes a transition state in order to lower the energy that you need for your reaction. So number one, it lowers the activation energy or it provides a faster pathway. Basically, it forms a, a, what's called a, a new reaction intermediate that provides a faster pathway. Basically, it's kind of like this. You can get two, if you're going to drive home, there's different number of ways you can make your drive faster. One way is, is you just drive faster. You drive at faster speed. The other way is you find a different pathway. You find a, a quicker route home. Okay, so that's what a catalyst does, those two things. And last but not least, we could add some concentration. However, this happens in only first and second order reactions, not in zero order reactions. And you have no clue what that means because we haven't talked about orders of reactions, but you'll know what that means by the end of this vodcast. Let's um, move on to rates of appearance and disappearance, and this is pretty easy, even though it looks like a crazy equation. All the rates of appearance and disappearance is, is the change in concentration over the change in your time. And let me give you an example. Let's say we have this reaction right here, this N2O5 breaking down, and what they say is the concentration of N2O5, he starts at 0 0.100 molar. That's what they said initially. And it has been found to decrease to 0 0.008 molar. So what do we do? In order to find the change of concentration, we're going to take our final concentration, minus our initial concentration, and that ends up giving us negative 0 0.02 molar. And how do we know it's 0 0.0, wait, it's actually 0 0.2 molar, 0 0.20 molar. And how do we know that's negative? Well, it's decreasing. The reactants are going down. And we're going to divide that by our change in our time, and they said it happened in 100 seconds. And so this is negative 0.2 molar, over 100 seconds. So what was the change in my N2O5 is, my change was it went down 2 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity for every second. Molarity for every second. Or you could call that 0 .0002. Now, that's how you find the concentration change, the rate of your reaction. Now I'm just going to erase this real quick. And we know that this guy, the N2O5, decreased at 2 times 10 to the negative fourth molar for every one second. So just look at my molar ratios. In order to find out how much the N2 increased, he increases 4 times 10 to the negative 4 molar for every second. Why? Because for every 2 N2O5s, we have 4 NO2s. And how do we know about the oxygen gas? Well, he only increased 1 times 10 to the negative 4 molar per second. And if you can see here, we have our 2 to 4 to 1 ratio. And of course, we can change these numbers up, but it's going to keep the same ratio. Again, everything in chemistry, especially in this stuff, is proportional. Now, let's talk about our rate orders. Now, you, you've never heard the term rate orders before, but all the order of a reaction or the order of a substance is this exponent right there. This x value is what we're trying to find. Now, let me give you an example. Let's say our concentration of this oxygen gas doubles. It goes from 0.4 molar to 0.8 molar. Look at the rate of reaction. It went from 2 times 10 to negative third to 2 times 10 to negative third. It did not change. So it did not matter if we doubled the concentration. The rate of the reaction did not change. And that's called a zero-order reaction. 
And think about what to the zero power is. To the zero power is always equal to one, which means if we double our oxygen gas, if we double this guy, two to the zero power is one. Our rate stays the same. And that's called a zero order reaction. Now we have other kinds of reactions as well. Let's say in this scenario, and guys, I'm making up these numbers. So these are just made up numbers. I made them up just to show you the orders of reactions. But they could happen in real life. Here we have a concentration going from 0.4 molar to 0.8 molar. But look at the rate of the reaction. He went from 10, sorry, 2 times 10 to the negative third to 4 times 10 to the negative third. The concentration doubled, and the rate of the reaction doubled. And that is what we call first order, first order, which means it's to the first power. If we take this oxygen gas and we double our molarity, then the rate doubled as well. It was proportional. It was proportional there. And that, so that's called first order. We also have another order of our reaction. You can see how it's 0.4 molar to 0.8 molar. Again, we doubled our concentration. But look what happened to our rate. When our concentration doubled, our rate multiplied by 4. It quadrupled. And so that's called second order, second order, which means we have an exponent of 2. So if, if our oxygen gas doubles and it gets squared, 2 squared is what? 4. The rate goes up by 4 times. And so that is zero order, first order, and second order reactions. And guys, all we're going to have is zero, first, and second order in AP chemistry here. All right? So let me give you a way to how do we find these orders of the reactions. And that is called finding the rate law. Now the rate law looks like this. It says rate is equal to K times the concentration, like in this case, concentration of hydrogen gas squared. That would be second order with respect to hydrogen gas. And you can see it's first order with respect to oxygen gas. And we always determine the rate law experimentally, experimentally. And you can see how here, this is second order with respect to the hydrogen gas. It's first order because there's a one up here, first order with respect to oxygen gas, which means overall, it is third order. How did I come up with that number? Well, I can add 2 plus 1. It's amazing. I know. I can do it. It's awesome. All right? And so we end up finding the overall is third order. So how do you figure it out? Well, anytime you have a rate law, or you, you've been given an experiment, okay, initial rates, all you do is take two different experiments, and you take a look at their rates, their rate laws. And you... Look at how they changed. Did they double? Did the rate double? Is it zero? Is it first? Is it second order? Okay, and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. And how do we find our K, our units of K? Well, it's pretty easy. If we go up to our example right here, our rate is always in molar per second, molarity per second. Okay, and y you could call that, instead of molarity per second, you can call that molarity times seconds to the negative one. That's molarity per second. Now, the hydrogen gas was mol molarity, but he was squared. And the oxygen gas was molarity, but he was only to the first power. So what do I have on this side? I have molarity to the third power. And I only want one molar, one molarity, on the left side. And I want a second to negative one. So what is the units of K? Well, I got to get rid of two of those molarities to leave me with just one. And I need a second to negative one. Okay, a seconds to the negative one. Now you can see how if you're overall third order, then you got to get rid of two molarities. If you're overall second order, you got to get rid of one molarity. If you're overall overall first order, you don't have to get rid of any molarities. And we'll get good practice at this in class. And of course, if you just want to find out what K actually is, you plug in some data. Let me give you an example of a problem. Okay, and I'll show you how to do this problem from beginning to end. So here I have this data. I have initial rates. And of course, I know my rate law is going to be rate is equal to K times the concentration of A to some power times the concentration of B to some power. I don't know what those powers are, but I can figure them out. Now, if I want to figure out what A's order is, I have to look at two experiments where A changes. And I want to also look at two experiments where B does not change, okay? Let me give you an example. If we look at experiment three, and we look at experiment two, and we look at 
experiment three's rate, experiment three's rate is 24 times 10 to the negative 2. The K is right there. What is A at experiment 3? He's 0 0.40, and he's to some power. B is 0 0.20 to some power. And now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to compare that to experiment 2. Experiment 2, he's at 6 times 10 to negative 2. He's got K. A is 0 0.20 to some power. B is 0 0.20 to some power. Now, see what happened, why I use experiment 2 and experiment 3 is, look what happens with B. They cancel out because they're the same thing. And, of course, the Ks cancel out as well. And look what happens here is 24 and 6, when I divide that, I end up getting 4. 0.4 and 0.2, I end up getting 2. And remember, that's 2 to some power. So what would X be? X has X is not 0, it's not 1, it's 2. So what's my order with respect to just A? It's second order, second order. I have to do this again in order to find the order of B, and in order to find the order of B, I'm going to look at experiments 2 and experiments 1. And you can see the rate of experiment 2 is 6 times 10 to negative 2. Guys, I always put the bigger rate on the top. That makes it easier problem in my calculator. I have K. What is A's concentration? He's 0 0.20. Now, I know he's to the second power. I know that already. And B is 0 0.20, but I do not know his power, so I put a little Y there. When I look at experiment 1, he's 3 times 10 to negative 2. I know he's got K. He's 0 0.20 times... I know his order is second power. It doesn't really matter because he cancels out, okay, which is nice and I know he's 0 0.10 to some power. And why did I use 2 and 1? Again, I got rid of A, and of course K is out of there as well. And I take a look, 6 divided by 3, that's 2. 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.1, that's 2 to some power. 2 to what power equals 2? You guys all know that, it's 1. So what's my order with respect to B? My order is first order. So here I have, if you see, my final rate, my, what is called my rate law, is rate equals k times a to the second power times b to the first power. It's second order with respect to a, first order with respect to b. It's third order overall. overall. Now, if I want to figure out who k is, what the number for k is, I'm just going to plug in a number. It doesn't matter which experiment I use. I can use any experiment. I'm going to use the first one. So my rate at the first experiment is 3 times 10 to negative 2. I have k. I have a is 0 0.20, and that's to the second power. b is 0 0.10. He's to the first power. And now I'm just doing a little bit of algebra here. I'm going to multiply all the stuff on the right. I'm going to divide it into the left, and I end up getting k is 7.5. 7.5. And what are my units for K? Well, I had molarity squared here. I had molarity. What do I want for my rate? He's molarity per second. And so how many molarities do I have to get rid of? i got to get rid of two of them because i got overall third order. i got to get rid of two. And, of course, I still need that second to negative one. I always need that on my units for K. Guys, that is the first part of kinetics, and we will get a lot of practice in class. I hope my inflection in my voice has been great and very interesting, and I hope you have a great day. See you later.